Hi friends, Sharon for Mad Paper Crush here. Today, we're gonna make these really fun steampunk tags. And if you can just take a look at this background back here and how shimmery it is, we're actually going to make these using paint that we make from mica powder. So I'm gonna show you some of the mica powders that were graciously sent to me from Hippie Crafter. And we are going to make these wonderful, fun, iridescent tags using mica powder and then some fun embellishments on top. So let's get going and make these tags. Okay, before we get started on our project, I wanted to show you the mica powders that were sent to me by Hippie Crafter. They graciously sent me these to play around with and um, see what I thought of them. So this is the box and I love, <laughs> I love the box. It's a uh, very hippie colors and uh, I think that's really cool. There are 24 mica powders in this package that they sent me and on their website um, you can see you know the different products that they have um, but this is the mica powders and um, so I'm just going to open them up here and it says it does say that they are pearlescent pigments there which most mica powders are pearlescent um, there but I just wanted to tell you that so here's how they come and they come in these um, beautiful little jars. These are 32 mil jars. And I will go over each of the colors just so you can see the variety of colors that are in there. Um, but before I do that, each one of them, let me try to open this up here carefully because they will make a mess. Each one comes, you can see how full that is. It comes very full of your powdered pigment there. And once again, I'm gonna try and put this on without making too much of a mess. Um, the jar itself is about an inch and a quarter tall. And then the diameter is probably about the same. So it is um, a very good size of pigment powder. You'll have this pigment powder probably for a very long time, depending on what you're doing with it. So I, when we do our project, you're gonna see I don't use that much and it really goes a very long way. So this is the light blue and it's just beautiful. This is the Carolina blue. So this one has um, some flecks of silver in there as well, which I really like too. And you can see it does, does get on your hands. So just be careful when you're um, you know, handling them. Try not to get the powders too close to your face so that you don't inhale any of those powders. And this is phthalo blue. I'm not sure if that's how you say that. P-H-T-H-A-L-O, <laughs> phthalo, phthalo blue. It looks kind of like a purple. It's gorgeous. This one's really pretty. And then this is brilliant blue. So you can see the difference here between the um, Carolina blue and the brilliant blue. It's there um, look like they're the same blues, but they have sort of different highlights in them. Very cool. This one is wine. We will be using wine today. I love the wine. This one looks like it has flecks of gold in it silver gray so this one is also pretty cool that would be fun to do maybe some sort of halloween thing and then i'll start this way this is yellow ochre it's very bright pretty color there teal that's a beautiful teal color i love that orange yellow very bright we're going to be using that today it almost looks like a neon orange <clears throat> Lilac, that's beautiful. Nice purple color there. Burnt Umber, this one is very dark. We'll be using this in our project today, but I really like um, how this one turns out. This one's great for vintage-y type feel things. Pastel Purple, so where's our, where was that other purple? So you can see a little bit, the Lilac is lighter and the Pastel is a little bit, um, has a little bit more pigment there. And then what do we got? Grass green. That's a very bright green, sort of yellowy in there. Sea green. This would be fun for maybe some mermaid projects, under the sea projects. This is rose. That one's pretty too. I like that one. This is, and you can see 
There must have been um, one that was a little bit open or something because there are <laughs> pigments all in the box here. But um, let's see. Fuchsia. That's really pretty. Scarlet mica powder. That one's pretty too. That one's close to the rose, but the rose looks like it has more of a silver tint or silver flicks, flex in it where that one doesn't. And this is silk white. I'll try and get some of these other colors off of there. But that's a really pretty white. That would be fun to do uh, maybe with the silver gray. Light yellow. That one is also very bright, even though it is a light yellow. This is silver black. So we had silver gray and silver black. So let me pull those out and see if I can, once again, get some of the powder off so we can see the colors. That one's kind of hard to kind of hard to tell the difference. Let's see if I open them. So this one is the silver gray. Ooh, you can see that is very gray. And I opened it probably, but whoa. Yes, I'm totally making a mess here. And this one is the um, black gray. Yes, they're definitely different there. They look the same kind of in the jars when we just look through, but they are not the same. And then this is graphite. And I think I'm going to open this one too, because this one probably, ooh, looks like I shook them up, but this one has a lot of silver in it. Wow, that one's cool. I like that one. Could definitely do some um, sparkly Halloween projects with these, some of those darker colors. Okay, and this one's Robin's Egg Blue. You can see my <laughs> hands are getting to be a mess, but that's okay. That one's really pretty. <clears throat> and then we have Pure Red. And that one definitely looks like a pure red color. Looks like candy apple red. And then this one is Orange Red. And that's a, that's a nice orange color. Very nice. And so those are all of the... Um, the mica powders in this pack. And I just wanted to kind of show you them. We're just gonna be using a couple of them in our project, but I wanted to give you a preview of them before we got started. All right, I'm gonna be working on time cards. Um, I have a stack of time cards that I'm still working through. Um, and these I had done some um, coffee staining to. So they're a little bit marked already, which is perfectly fine, but you don't have to use these. So because we're going to be doing collage and things on them, a lot of this um, stuff might not even, you know, show up that much in the final results. So you could use manila folders for your background. You could use um, cardstock from, you know, a paper pad. You could use um, book pages, you know, a couple of them glued together to give it, a, you know, a little bit more stability. There's a lot of different things you could use for this. So don't feel like you have to use time cards just because I am. Um, I think that time cards kind of have a steampunk sort of feel, but like I said, you could use whatever you have in your stash is really, you know, what you should do. <laughs> and then the other thing I'm going to be, um, using in the first layer here is um, this wonderful stack of um, scraps. <laughs> so dig into your scraps. I'm probably going to be using some book pages. I'm probably going to be using um, just whatever I can kind of find in here. So I kind of want things that are um, either with a design or words or something like that. I don't think I want to use anything plain per se. I think I'm going to keep it, you know, kind of all sorts of things going on here in the background. So I'm just going to look through my stash here and pick out some things that I think sort of fit that bill. And um, because these paints, you know, are pretty textured plans, or I'm sorry, I'm reading that word there, pretty, um, uh, not textured, they are pretty pigmented. I think that they'll cover white pages pretty good. So I may just, you know, kind of look for some words that I think might be fun, you know, on in sort of a steampunk theme kind of um, thing here. So I have some book, book pages here, seams and stitches. So I think there's a lot of things in here I could use. So I'm just gonna pull out a bunch of those things and then we're gonna start collaging onto our backgrounds. Okay, before I actually start collaging, I did just wanna say that I am gonna cut these down. So I don't want these tags to be this big. I think these are like 
nine inches tall. So that's a little big for the tags that I want to do. And I'm going to be doing, you know, several at a time here because I want to have, you know, sort of a whole collection when I get done. So I'm just going to decide what size I want. Um, I, this width here, which is I think three and a quarter inch, these cards are three and a quarter inches wide here. I think six inches goes really nice with them or even six and a half. So I may do, you know, some of a couple different sizes because I certainly don't think that, you know, all of your tags have to match in terms of um, size and things like that. So I'm just going to cut these down to whatever size I'm feeling like they should go with. And then um, I will be eventually cutting the tapers off of the corners to make them into actual tags but I'm, I may not do that right now especially before the collaging because I may end up going over them and then I'll just cut everything off at, at one time so at least I'm going to have my height that I'm working with and so I'm not over collaging onto you know inches of paper that I'm not going to be using so I'm going to go ahead and cut those down and then we'll get started Okay, I'm just going to kind of tell you how I'm going to go about collaging and then I'll speed up the rest um, so that you don't have to, you know, watch me in real time <laughs> do all this collaging. But basically all I'm going to be doing is taking um, bits of paper and putting them wherever I want, whether it's upside down, right side up, you know, slanted. I'm just going to be sort of filling these and probably not totally filling, but just um, putting all of these papers that I pulled out in places that I think look nice to me. So um, I do have some, some plain ones here. I said I'm probably not going to use those. So I just sort of grabbed a handful to see what, you know, would come out here. But I'm going to be probably using the ones that have more words and um, numbers and maybe even some of these patterns. So I like the graph, you know, kind of paper, the ledger sort of paper on some of these that I might, you know, go ahead and stick down. But that's all I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to grab my little um, pad here for gluing. I'm going to gra grab my glue stick and then I'm just going to start gluing stuff down. Um, the edges probably won't be showing that much. So you don't need to worry what shapes there are unless, you know, that's something that you like to, to look at. And I'm also going to just try to sort of um, spread out each type of paper on all of my, you know, six tags that I have um, going here. So it, they're, I want them to be different, but all similar. So I am, you, you've seen that probably before with master boards or something like that having things um, look different, but have the same elements kind of draws them or brings them together, you know, as a cohesive um, piece, even though it's not going to be one piece. <laughs> so I'm going to speed this up and you can just kind of watch what I'm doing here.
Okay, now we're going to create our paint. And to make the paint, I'm gonna be using the mica powders and some Liquitex matte medium um, fluid here, and then also some water. So the matte medium will help set the mica powders so that they don't end up rubbing off. If you just use mica powder with water, when the water dries, the powders will um, lift off of anything that you've put them on. So my matte medium will help set them so that they don't, you know, go away. <laughs> so the colors I've chosen for my sort of um, steampunk theme that I have going on here is burnt umber. So that's this one and it's very dark. Whoa, as I make a mess here. And I've just used these little um, plastic um, cups to mix things, but I've just kind of, you can kind of see that they're very, I have these very liquidy and I want them to be very wet because I want to move this around on our um, bases. So I don't want it to, you know, I kind of want it to be pretty loose and I may end, even end up adding more water as I go, but this is kind of where I want to start at sort of a very um, liquid beginning there. And the burnt umber is very dark, um, so I'm probably not going to use too much of that. And then the next color that I already have mixed is the yellow ochre here that I have mixed already. And it is very bright, but I love it because it's not like a, it's not quite a, like a sunshine yellow. It's more gold in there. And I kind of, I kind of really like that. But once again, I've made it, I've mixed it very loose so that it'll spread around for me a little bit. And then the other colors I'm gonna be using here are wine. So this color you can see is very, um, I don't know, there's browns and reds and different colors in there, it's beautiful, but it definitely has a steampunk feel to me in there. And then also this orange yellow. So I thought that would be fun too, to add in there. So these are the kind of the four colors I'm going to use. You could use, you know, uh, more colors if you wanted to. I may even end up adding, you know, maybe like a, um, I was thinking like a little teeny bit of turquoise or like a teal green or something might be fun or even just teal to kind of, um, you know how metal looks when it's corroded, it kind of gets that green patina. So I thought maybe mixing some of this in might be fun as well. So I'm going to just leave that out just in case I want to use that one as well. But I only have four cups right now, so I'm gonna mix these four. We're gonna start there and then we'll add if we need to add. So I'm gonna show you how I mix them. Um, and uh, like I said, I've already done these two, but it's basically the same for all of them. So I'm going to make sure I have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a little baby wipe here nearby, nice and wet, so that I can wipe things off because this powder does get everywhere. So just as a warning, <laughs> so you know that. And let's go ahead and start with the, the wine um, mica powder here. So I'm just gonna very carefully open it and these are really full, but look at that beautiful shimmer there. Oh my goodness, it's so gorgeous. So I'm just gonna take a little spoonful. I don't, I wouldn't even know how much that is, maybe like, a half a teaspoon maybe, I don't know, but I'm gonna do one more of those. So maybe if it's one teaspoon and you don't have to mix a lot because it, it will go far. So and I'm just um, wiping off my little spoon here so that it doesn't um, get into the next color. So I'm gonna put that aside and we'll do two at a time here. And then I'm also gonna do this um, orange yellow as well. So, and this one isn't, it doesn't have the same type of shimmer. It has a shimmer, but it's not quite the same type of shimmer as the other one. So it's um, a little bit more mellow, which I like. I like all these colors together. I think it'll be cool. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do after I've gotten my powders in there is I'm gonna take my matte medium and I'm just going to add maybe six or seven drops something like that. Maybe a little more, eight, nine, 10, I don't know. Just a little bit. <clears throat> and here I'm making a mess with this as well. Okay, so now that I have that in there, I'm gonna mix. 
and I'm just pulling out some paintbrushes. These, you can use any paintbrushes you want. Obviously keep them separate so you don't mix colors, but I have these paintbrushes that are very soft. Um, I've tried to use the softest ones I could get because I don't want um, the edges of my paint to be defined when I go to paint them. So you'll see what I mean when we get there, but I'm just taking this now and mixing it together. And you can see it's becoming, um, you know, kind of a liquid there, but it's more of a paste right now. And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna move this aside for just a second, is I'm gonna take my little water bottle spray here and I'm just gonna spray some water in there. This is what's gonna give it our nice and liquid feel here. So you can see now I have that kind of runny paint that I have in the other ones going there. Nice and runny, which is what we want. And then we'll do the same thing with the last one. We'll get this matte medium mixed in there. And I like this orange color. And then we'll add some water as well. And the kind of neat thing about this is that you can keep, you know, keep adding water if you need more. You could add, add more pigment if you wanted to. But these are really intense colors. So I don't think I will need to add any more color. I think this is going to do it for me. All right. So now I have my four colors mixed. And now we're going to get our table set up to get started painting. Okay. I just added a little bit of under paper on my desk here so that if my paint, you know, goes... Um, off of the tags a little bit. I won't be, you know, wrecking my table or anything like that. I also just pulled out three of the tags and um, I didn't cut the corners yet. I think I may do that real quick. Um, so I'm just going to grab another tag that I have and I just sort of use tags that I have as a template for things. So actually I could probably do all three of these at one time to make it a little bit easier for me. Make sure they're all lined up here. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna put this right on the edge there and see if I can cut all three at one time. Not too bad. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure it's all lined up over here how that was going to work, but yes, I think that's good. So now I can use one of those for my other three. Um, and I will, I will cut those before we start on those as well, but I'm going to work on three at a time just so I can, you know, kind of uh, focus on what I'm doing here. And what I'm going to do with the colors is I think I'm going to start with my lighter colors first. Um, just to, just to kind of see how they're going to go on and cover things up. Um, once again, I'm going to have either a paper towel or a dry rag or something where I can maybe blot things off, um, or rub things out if I want some more of the words or the, you know, um, the things that are underneath to be showing a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the yellow ochre here and put a little bit on my paintbrush. I'm gonna try not to put too much. And I'm gonna work from um, this side, the right side over to the left since I'm left-handed. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna get my, my hands too dirty. Although when I start on the second colors, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, you know, touch and go anyway. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm just moving my little mica paints here around on here in no particular order. <laughs> no particular rhyme or reason. And I'm just putting it in, um, you know, a few places. I'm not necessarily putting it everywhere on these papers. I'm just moving it around a little bit. And now when I tried this before, I wanted to, I didn't do um, a second color with one color still wet. So I may try that to see how they mix. But I love the yellow so far. It's really cool looking. 
<clears throat> and I like that it's allowing some of our collage to show through as well. So, all right, so I'm just doing a little bit here and there. And I don't know if this one, this paintbrush might be a little too heavy to allow to stay in there. Let me see if I can, actually, I can just put them down now that I have my under paper here. Okay, so now I'm going to grab one of my other colors. I'm gonna grab this yellow orange and boy, it's looking kind of fluorescent right now, isn't it? But that's okay. I may just do a teeny bit with this because I don't know if I want too much, but this is still wet. So I'm gonna keep my, my hand up. <laughs> So that hopefully I don't get my hand painted. Well, that's not a bad thing. And I like the way that looks actually. And it doesn't look like it's really mixing with the yellow, which is also kind of cool. Now this one does seem to have a little bit more um, of defined lines around the edge of what I'm doing. So I may add a little bit more water to this and I may just do it right on there couple little squirts and then just push things out a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. And before I go on to the next one, maybe I'll add a little water into there and then I won't have to spray on the tag. So a little bit more water. And once again, just whatever, you know, put it in the areas where Kind of looks good to you a couple bits here and there because we're going to be adding all of the colors and then um, we'll see how it looks when it's dry <clears throat> all right so i'm gonna i don't want to do too much of the the yellow or i'm sorry the orange there all right now we're going to go a little bit darker so now i have my my wine color and I'm going to add some water to this right away because I can tell just by putting my paintbrush in it that it was sort of the same consistency as the orange and I knew that was not quite wet enough so I've made that even wetter here and we're gonna keep going same thing but now we're um, heading a little bit darker so you can see and that is mixing a little bit with the other colors, which is fine. But I just want to be careful how much I put on because I do want some of that, our bottom collage showing through. And of course, my um, colors too from, from the top. <clears throat> okay. Now I may, well, I'm just kind of doing whatever I, I think feels right <laughs> in the moment here. And some of these, I think um, like this one, it has a little bit, maybe too much orange in it. I don't know. I'm just gonna try to move this around with a little more of the wine in the orange spots and I like that better. So I may do that with this as well. Just kind of get this color in there a little bit. And you can see I'm not leaving too much open and we still have the brown to go. So, and that is intentional. The brown I know is very dark and I just wanna be careful how much I cover with that because it will very quickly, you know, overtake all of these colors. So, and once again, I'm adding um, more of the wine kind of to where the orange was. And you can still see the orange through, I can see that. but I'm just toning it down just a bit because I think it, it's a little overwhelming. Okay, looking good.
Okay. I like that so far. And now we're going to take our burnt umber, which you can see is very dark, but it's really a beautiful, beautiful brown. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. And you can see it kind of totally covers up anything. I'm going to add some more, a little more water to this. Here. And I'm just finding some spots that haven't really been filled too much yet. I may keep the brown a little bit more to the outside. And this one, oh, I got some, I need to find my rag here. Let me find a rag real quick. I think I just want to blot some of this off. Oops. And I actually like um, how that kind of brings some of the, all the colors together. So before everything dries, I'm going to do that just a little bit on all of them. And then I'm going to go back to my brown and kind of finish up what I'm working on here. Maybe the brown, I'll mix a little bit more with the yellows. And yeah, I think this paintbrush is not as soft as the other ones that I was using. I think that's what's sort of bothering me about it. It's too defined. So. We'll use our rag to take some of that out. And I think that is looking fantastic. Okay, I'm pretty good with where we're at with these. So I'm just gonna kind of set them aside so that I can work on my, um, my other three. So I went ahead and cut the corners off those tags and I'm just going to do the same exact process. So this one, I'm just going to speed up and you can just kind of watch um, how I go through it.
Okay, I finished painting them and I don't know if you noticed, but I went back and actually took the yellow uh, paintbrush that I had, washed it out to use it with the burnt umber, and I really liked the way it applied um, a lot better with this softer brush that I could just kind of push things around and smudge it and smear it around. So I really think um, for this technique, for sure, the softer brushes are going to you're gonna like those a little bit better. And I definitely kept my little rag nearby and you know, sort of blotted as I went. Um, and I liked um, the way that worked as well. So I'm gonna let these dry, but before I do, I just kind of wanted to, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but look at how that shimmers. I think that is so cool, the way that shimmers around there, I love it. So um, I'm going to, I'm not gonna clean up my paints just yet. Um, hopefully they will stay wet for just a little bit because I want to do, after this is dry, I may just kind of cover them up. Um, I'm going to do some spattering with this paint as well. So, and since I've covered up a lot of the orange, I may do uh, mainly some of the orange spatter. Um, this one is almost gone. I may have to mix up a little bit more wine if I want to try to spatter some of that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where we are once these get a little dry. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes, maybe even use my um, my drying tool and get these dried so that we can move on to the next step. <laughs> 